Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Wednesday, the 21st of December, Bull versus Bear webinar. Steve Miley on the call for trade day. Welcome, everyone. Usual regular run through in here today, guys. Calendar, what we've had, what we've got coming up, macro fundamental impacts, um, what's hitting markets right here, right now, according to the major financial markets news wires. And then we'll take a look at some charts. I'm going to keep it fairly brief in here today, guys. Um, just a heads up, uh, we will be continuing the webinars until Friday. Friday will be the last webinars of the year. No webinars in between Christmas and New Year. So webinars continuing until um, uh, Friday, and that will be the last webinar of the year. Um, another heads up, um, in case you missed it, we did ran a technical Tuesday yesterday, focusing on, on momentum indicators uh, and, and oscillators, looking at overbought, oversold, divergence and confirmation and trading signals from indicators. That is archived here and you can pick up the um, previous uh, Technical Tuesday um, um, video in here, uh, webinar in here, uh, which was on Dow theory, chart levels and trend lines following trend. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so, yeah, check those out. You go to resources in the members area, members.tradeday.com. Um, drop down menu here, resources, technical Tuesday. So it's forward slash technical dash Tuesday. Um, you come to here. Um, I can post it into the chat in case any of you can't, cannot find that. But, I mean, it's fairly easy to find. So, yeah, you go in here, resources. And then, um, yeah, Technical Tuesday. And there they are down here. So they're archived here and here. And video two is the latest one from yesterday. OK, um, so and as I said, um, at the top of the webinar there, um, the uh, Bull versus Bear webinar, um, will, the last one for the year will be this Friday on the 23rd. Uh, let's look at the calendar, what we've had, what we've got coming up. Super light calendar. We have had the GFK, uh, German consumer climate data, beating um, um, expectations very slightly. I mean, very marginally in here was due in at minus 38.0, coming at minus 37.8. Do you get Canadian um, CPI data this afternoon? Uh, not probably going to be too big a deal. And then we get um, consumer confidence data out of the US. So we're certainly watching out for that. And also crude um, oil inventories later. So uh, 10 o'clock Eastern and 10.30 Eastern, respectively. Consumer confidence and crude oil inventories will be watching for those. Five things to know to, know to start your day. Um, Musk stepping down from Twitter. Um, Zelensky, the Ukrainian president, uh, going to visit Washington, um, going to Congress. Um, a House committee vote to release Donald Trump's tax information to the public. Futures have had a slight rebound here this morning with European markets up and we've already covered consumer confidence and oil data coming out this afternoon. So stocks slightly higher in here. Um, bond markets have calmed down a little bit. So we did go lower in stocks on the back of a big sell off in not only Japanese government bonds, but also in global government bonds yesterday to sell off in bonds to higher yield. As we saw a tightening of monetary policy from the Bank of Japan, very unexpected. So bond markets plunge globally on that, driven by um, JGBs, that's Japanese government bonds. JGBs leading the way lower on the back of that BOJ announcement. That was 20 over 24 hours ago now. Um, but bond markets have calmed down and equity markets um, are bouncing um, as we've seen a bit more of a calm. And we had a smart slight bounce. So the S&P did break a, a, a four day losing streak yesterday, um, putting on a slight rebound, but it was a slight rebound, but a little bit higher again in here this morning. Um, what else? And um, futures rise and also Nike as well post a strong call we had nike data out as well um and then so consumer confidence is in focus today uh FTSE 100 um is up significantly today energy firms retailers and the FTSE 100 incidentally i only picked this one up because that's the FTSE 100 is the uk uh, stock index um, it's close to its record highs. It's, it's close to the highs of the year. It's been a massive outperformer um, compared to um, um, US and European counterparts in here this year. Back up to um, highs or close to highs from the beginning of the year, um, partially to do with the weakness in the currency, though. That has helped. Um, it's nothing, believe me, it's nothing to do with the state of the economy. This economy is no better than anywhere else globally. But the weakness in the currency is obviously beneficial if you're a, a UK reporting um, entity. So um, the corporates have probably been mostly boosted by that. And there's a lot of energy firms, remember, in the UK, um, in the FTSE, energy firms and banks and financials. OK, so energy um, firms obviously up 
um, with the the fact that we've had energy prices surging and um, banks um, up with higher interest rates. So, um, yeah, those two um, influencing the FTSE over the past year. I thought this was interesting. Um, it's not going to impact us right here, right today, but I thought I'd point it out. So we get um, a rotation. You get a rotation in the Fed um, um, voters, OK, in the FOMC. So the FOMC have members who vote and members who don't. They still attend the meetings, but they don't get to vote. They still get to chip in, but don't get to actually vote. So there's a rotation. And the rotation we got going into 2023 tilts the FOMC slightly more dovish. OK, so just to point that out as we go into next year. Um, so, we, and I just look for this article. I can't believe um, just showing my age as with everything else. You know, there's I don't know if there's a saying in the US, but there's certainly saying in the UK that, you know, you're getting old when all the policemen start to look young. Right. Well, I'm, I know I'm looking old now when the actual uh, the new Fed members. And I, I've never seen a photo of Laurie Logan before or or um, in here, um, uh, uh, Austin Goolsby. So, um, yeah. So these two in here look. Yeah. I'm just making me feel old. I just thought I'd share that with you guys. Um, but we also have um, uh, Kashkari is now going to be a voter and also Harka. Um, and Kashkari, probably the most hawkish of those. Although Kashkari is actually, you know, relatively has always been more of a dove. Um, and just a, a little, uh, I think this is useful in here. So this is not from the school that we use. It's from a, a school, another school that's in the UK. Um, that actually, I have associations with as well. But I mean, um, they put out. So this is ITC, In Touch Capital Markets. Um, they have this hawk dove sheet that they regularly update. Um, I'll share the link for that in here. And if you click on it, it pops it out. So I can also share the, I don't know if it just put, if you can get that as well, I'll put that in the link. But um, so we can see in here, so that your ticks, you know, who are the voters and non-voters. So you see the rotation in here. Um, so we have um, the rotation coming through into 2023 in here, um, new voters and um, going, those going out and those coming in. See, the ones um, that are in dark and down at the moment are those that are currently um, voters. OK, so we're going to get this rotation in. So, yeah, I just thought I'd share that with you as well. So that's just uh, interesting going forward. Um, and also just interesting. I'll share this as well in the chat if you can, if you want to access this. Um, an article in here and uh, Goldman says stock recovery and JP Morgan actually says stock recovery won't be easy in 2023. So stocks are expected to fall back towards 2023 in lows in the first half of the year according to these so um although we're not saying new bear market going deeper but maybe dipping before they go back higher and it's going to be maybe a choppy sideways 2023 anticipated by jp morgan and goldman sachs so taylor the tape going into the day we did get slight rebounds yesterday um from the major indices and up higher in here this morning um the nasdaq's only up a tenth but we've got the dow's up six tenths and the s p future up four tenths going into Today and European bosses leading us higher, um, up a percent nearly on the FTSE UK index. The German DAX up just under nine tenths, and the French CAC um, over um, over one percent higher in here this morning. Um, partly on the positive news there we've had, as I say, from that German data, partly as a follow through, um, as we've seen a calming um, from the yield market, from the bond markets um, over the past uh, uh, twelve hours or so. Let's go take a look at some charts. I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on here, guys. OK, um, not huge development. You know, we uh, we've looked at these charts a lot recently. Um, and, uh, you know, this is all the analysis I did actually for that technical Tuesday. The market did go lower in here. Um, we do have now kind of um, we're gaining like a positive divergence in here. So the market's now got a succession of higher highs and higher lows. And you can see as we go higher in here, we actually have made higher highs on the momentum indicator as well. So that's showing you uh, a positivity in here. We didn't really get a negative divergence in here, a, a divergence uh, like a bullish divergence. But now we've got a positive confirmation on the way back up again, higher highs and higher lows. Even though in my article, uh, in my reports, I've started with a more negative bias, considering where we are in here today, I think we've got a slightly more positive bias coming in today. We have reversed. Remember, we look at this trend line, that trend line coming down. There's the CPI peak. OK, that's the CPI peak from last week. There's the downtrend line. We kind of tentatively reversed that yesterday. We've also pushed above this little peak in here. Now we've got higher highs and higher lows. I'm tentatively positive. I don't really want to enter long though until we break back above the current highs. So, you know, the overnight highs, that is. So if we can get back above uh, 38, like 76, 77 area, then it looks more bullish to me. And then looking for the next leg higher. Similar story in here for the NASDAQ. You now you've got now higher highs and higher lows in here. We've also reversed the trend line. You know, we were kind of nowhere near that. We're now through the trend line. Again, probably looking for a break above 
um, 11 to 60, 11 to 65 kind of area to signal a more positive tone, um, waiting for those confirmations on top side. Let's take a look at the uh, commodity and bond markets. So um, gold in here, if we look at it more broadly, still in this wider, broader range in here, we've moved right to the upper limits of that. And I would say there's now much more of a more positive. So we just failed above the previous peak in here yesterday. We've had a little bit of a setback. I'd be looking for the break. This looks like more like a flag pattern. So we've got these kind of quite impulsive move back higher. I'd be looking for a break back above this little kind of counter trend line that we've got running across here. You can see in here, we've got lower lows and lower highs. If we can break back above that, that's coming in around 1826 and a half in here. And certainly above that little peak there qualifies that through 1827.1. So those are kind of the parameters top side. Um, downside, there's no real obvious trigger um, for gold. Um, so there's no real level for me to actually say, you know, apart from going through the current low, if you do want to go short there. Let's take a look at oil. So we have reversed the trend line here, looking certainly more positive on oil up to and just through the recent peaks. So the recent peak there, 77.83, um, we've been up to 77.95, back up through there, certainly looks more positive on, on oil. And if we go back in here, yeah, it's looking bullish in here. You know, almost happy to pull the trigger on this one straight away or back up through 78.00, certainly looks bullish on, on, uh, on um, oil. Let's take a look at the bond market finally in here. So we got that plunge lower yesterday. The market's trying to stabilize, but you'd have to say it still looks very vulnerable in here. Remember, this is the um, this is the uh, 30 year. This is the actual T-bond, the Treasury bond. Um, let me just zoom in onto a shorter term chart. So we have had a slight bounce in here, but bit dead cat. You know, there's the sell off, you know, kind of yesterday went back lower in here overnight, trying to rebound. But, you know, I probably would want to wait until a break below the lows before I actually enter in short to get confirmation. It could just be a sideways uh, move in here today. But so really waiting for a confirmation through the low and then you could get an acceleration. 127.19 um, are the dual lows in here. So down through there sends us more bearish. Really, it's got to be back above like 128.08.09 to be more bullish and more positive on the top side for bonds all right guys it was a bit of a whistle stop quick um webinar today not a huge amount to add um two more webinars until the uh, festive season and then we'll be on break until the new year check out the technical tuesday if you missed it yesterday i'm going to wish you all a great trading day until then take care take stay safe until tomorrow's webinar